No, I, I, that's assuming that the wood is still good, right? The sheeting right. is good. If the wood's not good, I, I know that there's some homes, was it in the 70s, where they used half-inch plywood, you know, for the roof sheeting? Right. If you get, if you have a condensation problem on that, that's kind of hard to fix. You almost have to, you have to replace that, right? Because it's just too thin, right? Right. If the if the plywood is delaminated, if the plywood isn't delaminated and it's just as color, you can fix it. If the plywood's delaminated, that's a problem. <clears throat> then you have a problem. Then the of course the bigger problem today is that they use OSB board, which we refer to as was wood. Was wood. Right. Because it's not wood anymore. It's they <laughs> cut it up and Pressure cooked it. Was wood? Was yeah, wood. was wood. <laughs> Oriented strand board. Ori press wood. <laughs> it used to be wood, you know. Right. So now it's yeah. was wood, you know. Yeah, and you, you, didn't you tell me that the was wood is like mold fruit, too? It, it, it's oh. more susceptible to mold growth. Even sure. though they tell you it doesn't grow mold, it's like mold fruit, right? I mean, press wood, it gets wet. It's well, gonna, it gets wet, and the, 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 the matrix is, is, is wood, but the, the binder is some sort of polymer. And once that gets wet, then the the wood begins to, the, the composite begins to, to break down. Now, isn't that, aren't there some people, like you deal with a lot of like chemically sensitized people, immune compromised people, and right. I, I remember you talking a couple times where when the was wood gets wet, it sometimes even gives off other types of problems, not just mold, but like organic VOCs, right? And that's right. A, that's a whole other set of problems. Right. When you um when you pressurize or I'm sorry, when you use a blower door, you said you suck. We depressurize. You depressurize it. it, and so now if a house had always bees, would would that affect you know sucking any chemicals out of the wood in a new house? Not that I know of. Or I mean, if it becomes mush board, now you got a problem because it's. No longer OSB is much disoriented. Disoriented yeah. board, <laughs> and I suppose it could. Yeah. But uh, a blower door, we only bring it up to what we call fifty pascals negative, which is two tenths of an inch water column. It's not much of a pressure, but it's enough to identify leaks. Mm -hmm. And if there's mold present, it's enough to bring it in through the entire house. How, mo how much does one of those? Let, let's say I, you know, I just own a house, and you know. My electric bill is now going to go up, you know, and and uh, so I, I'm going to call you in and do a blower door. How, how much does it, something like that cost? Not not an Energy Star, but just a regular blower door inspection to tell me if my house leaks. Three fifty to five hundred, depending on the square footage, and that includes the decor. And 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 basically, you'll probably tell me what I need to do. I'll probably save that money in the first couple months, right? Uh, we do quantify it. Uh, in other words, if I identify three energy upgrade opportunities, I'm going to keep it simple. A furnace, attic insulation, and a setback thermostat. You know, you, you, you mentioned setback uh, thermostat twice now. What, what's a setback thermostat? It is a digital programmable thermostat that says, hey, I can keep the house at 68 when I'm unoccupied. And when I'm home, I can have it at 72 automatically without dialing it in. And, and and when I go to work, maybe I can drop it down to 64. Yeah, you get up at 6, so you set it up at 5 in the morning. Mm -hmm. You leave at 8, so you set it back at 7.30. And you get home at 4, you set it up, you go to bed at 9, you set it back. And in theory, that is supposed to save you energy, but in practice, people don't really use that fancy of programming. So, although we still give a point or something credit for a programmable thermostat, to say it saves energy is really a stretch because people don't do that. If, if I were to go in and program a thermostat based on what they told me and then lock it, then we could quantify it as far as going to save you this many dollars a year. But, but, just doesn't happen. but a lot of people will have their normal, let's say the mercury, those are the, the mercury mechanical ones. Stack, mechanical, yeah. you call that a mechanical? Uh, uh, mercury or bimetal. And they get in the morning and they turn it up to 72 because they're cold, and then they leave. Mm -hmm. And now the house is at 72 all day. Yeah. 
that's kind of a waste of energy, would you say? I mean, no, it's not kind of. It is. What's the the best uh, programmable thermostat that you, you that you would recommend? With the uh, electrical codes and associations and so on, there probably isn't the best. There's different kinds. There's a, a programmable thermostat that can change the program every day, seven days a week. You know, you have something on Monday, something different on Tuesday, which would be more of a commercial application. And then they have what's called a five plus two. You can do the same thing Monday through Friday, you know, same time increments and temperature settings and then Saturday and Sunday you could uh, program something else because you're home right on Saturdays and Sundays right. so the boys are over watching football mm -hmm. you you have the heat on at a higher temperature or air conditioning on mm -hmm. what what, do, what does one of those cost install about 150 uh, you can buy them for $50 at Lowe's and put them in yourself I really mean, the directions are pretty good so and and uh is that a homeowner? A homeowner can actually do that themselves? Mm -hmm. They give you schematics. Mm -hmm. Are they in Chinese or? <laughs> yeah. Because I've seen you have to be reading this side of it rather than that side because this might be French and this might be English and so on. Yeah. <laughs> They're pretty universal. Yeah. Which makes sense from a, you know, printing a booklet. Um, if you were like in, most people, you know, they have older homes. They're all worried about energy. Besides a the thermostat and the insulation, I mean, do you have any other suggestions that people should do to save significant amount of energy? Yeah, get rid of fireplaces. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you bring that up. I uh, I do some uh, inspections on homes, mm -hmm. and I have these these smoke tubes, and what's really funny is that even if the damper is closed on a fireplace, it's sucking air out of your house. Um, I've seen products, and man, Jimmy, you told me about this one product. What is it called that you can put in the, the chimney? Balloon. The balloon. The chimney balloon. Yeah. And how does that work? You buy, you find out the size of your flue, and, and they have various, you, the company has various sizes of these balloons, and you inflate them up in, and you, you stick them up into the flue, and you inflate it, and it expands, and goes into the corners and, and uh, nothing comes down and nothing goes up. Right. So it seems like if you have a fireplace that you don't use, a lot of people have fireplaces, they never use them. Right. They're like open windows. Well, and you know, I used to love a fireplace. I grew up in northern Michigan. And we had a 200 acre tree farm. So I we burned wood all the time. And it was wonderful. And then the studies that are, have come out recently with the toxic fumes that come off these fireplaces, it's, it's unbelievable. From the wood? Yeah, you just don't want to bring wood anymore. It, it's Unless you're outside in a bonfire. So when you walk into a house and you smell the country fireplace, you're not really smelling a country fireplace, you're smelling toxins. Whack in your lungs. So then you just go buy one of those plugins and you put one of those in. Right. I'm joking. Well, <laughs> those, you put a fireplace insert that's vented, not the non vented. Oh, what do you think of those non vent? These the new ventless fireplaces, no. they create jobs for me. Do they really? Tom, oh, yeah. you do a lot of blower doors at new homes with ventless fireplaces, correct? No. They, they don't put those in? Very, very few fireplaces today in homes, unless they're the big customs. So you don't see ventless fireplaces? No. <laughs> you know, no. I see them all the time in older homes. A ventless? Ventless fireplaces. They put them in their basements, and they have a fireplace, and it's ventless. By ventless, you mean the byproduct of combustion just dumps into the basement? Yes, and the ventless people sell these things, and they say they're pure combustion. And, you know, I, I think what happens is when you, I know one thing, you know, being a scientist, that pure combustion means vapor and carbon dioxide. And Light I'm not sure that's a good thing in, in, in a nice, tight home, right? Carbon dioxide and vapor. Right. You like vapor because 
<laughs> that keeps you busy, right? <laughs> that creates a career. <laughs> <laughs>